Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. So today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the pelvic or transvaginal ultrasound in female patients. This sort of study is done for pelvic pain, abnormal uterine bleeding, and other sorts of presentations. Um, big overall picture of how we're going to take an approach to this exam. First, you want to understand what's going on with the patient or symptoms they're presenting with. You want to understand their pregnancy status and whether they're premenopausal or postmenopausal. Um, we're going to take a look at the limitations of the study. Are you visualizing all the anatomy of interest? Um, are there any sort of uh, reasons why you may not be able to uh, see everything or evaluate all the anatomy? You want to, and then we'll go through each part of the anatomy in turn, looking at the uterus, cervix, both ovaries, the portions of the pelvic anatomy and peritoneum that we see, and then the bladder. Okay, so uh, in terms of a basic approach, um, we'll just cover once you have a sense of what's going on with the patient as a whole. And you definitely want to make sure you understand when was their last menstrual period? Are they pregnant? Um, is the patient... You know, premenopausal, postmenopausal, have they had prior surgery? You know, are they taking any estrogen or progesterone agonists? These sorts of things will really impact how you interpret the study. Then, you know, you can go through and go look at all of the provided images in turn and just make sure that we see all the anatomy interest, including the uterus, cervix, endometrium, the ovaries. Um, you know, are we looking at the patient just via a transabdominal approach or are we also um, doing transvaginal scanning? You know, Certain patients will be amenable to, uh, you know, one approach versus the other, and we want to make sure that, especially for transvaginal exams, that these are done with a chaperone. Um, you want to know: Does the patient have an IUD? Are we expecting to see an IUD? Are there abnormalities of development, such as Mullerian uh, abnormalities? Um, will 3D images be helpful for? Uh, getting a sense of the overall anatomy, can we correlate with prior ultrasound, CT, MRI, et cetera, to get an understanding of the overall patient anatomy? So those sorts of things are going to be helpful before we even kind of start. Um, you know, first first step, uh, frequently uh, images, at least at our institution, of the uterus are provided first. It's going to be important to measure the overall size of the uterus um, in three dimensions. You know, we want to remember that the uterus is measured from fundus to external os. You want to look at the overall morphology. Is there antiversion or retroversion? Or is there anti, uh, antiflexion or retroflexion? Um, is there a displacement of the uterus? Um, are we seeing any sort of abnormalities of overall uterine morphology? And then we're also going to look for mass lesions for, you know, typically, you know, those are fibroids, but there are other uh, things that can cause mass lesions in the uterus. We'll look for post-surgical changes along each each of the provided images. Um, and then not just the kind of the static images, but when we get to the clips, you're, you're also going to go through the same anatomy. You know, in the in, especially in the setting of pain, we're going to look at an area called the subendometrial halo, um, which is the correlate for the junctional zone. You want to measure that thickness, look for any sort of heterogeneity, cystic changes, echogenic bands or mass lesions there. Um, and then we're, we're also going to look at the endometrium, which is here measured. Um, you want to understand its thickness relative to the patient's uh, premenopausal or postmenopausal state. Um, you know, this this thickness, by the way, is the, the double thickness. You're measuring it from both sides. And you and if there is fluid, you want to make sure to exclude that. Um, we're going to look for focal lesions within uh, the, you know, in the endometrium, in the uh, kind of uh, intracavitary lesions. Um, and then, you know, if there is an IUD or any sort of implant, you want to make sure that we check us, give us, get a sense of that, the positioning. Um, on each of these images, these are just the scray scale images, but if we do find an abnormality, it's going to be especially important to correlate with color Doppler to see if there's flow in it. Um, and then, you know, for anything that might be cystic, to see if it's cystic versus solid. Um, we're going to see in some of these, you know, some of these images are going to go kind of lower down, or you can see parts of the cervix. Uh, also on the sagittal image, you'll be able to evaluate the cervix. And like looking at the, the uterine, uh, the uterus, um, you want to take a look for like cystic lesions, mass lesions, or any sort of, you know, post-surgical, post-procedural changes. Okay. 
Um, and then we'll get to an evaluation of the ovaries. It's important to get a sense of the overall size. Um, one of the cutoffs that we will use or think about is that if it's larger than four centimeters, it can, you know, it's a, a little bit, you know, it, it can be difficult to exclude kind of a torsion detorsion phenomenon if there, these things are larger. Um, if, if the ovaries are enlarged, are they in normal position? Have they been displaced medially? Um, you want to get a sense as to whether there's uh, normal you know, appearance of the follicles, are there more or less, are they, you know, um, you know, uh, any enlarged cystic structures, do we see normal flow within the ovary uh, on color Doppler, are we seeing a normal appearance of the spectral waveform um, here, um, seeing both the kind of, um, uh, kind of, kind of sharp peaks of the arterial flow, and then seeing venous flow, um, you know, uh, especially when we're concerned about torsion, you know, you're going to lose venous flow before you, you lose arterial flow. Um, and then if, if there's, uh, and especially if there's um, concern for torsion, we'll see if we have, when we go through the cine clips of the adnex, you want to take a look on grayscale of the, you know, take a look at that vascular pedicle. Um, and, then th and then in addition, not just within the ovary itself, you want to be looking adjacent to the ovary, whether there's any sort of adnexal, uh, lesion, whether cystic, solid, etc. Okay, um, and that includes both both adjacent to the ovary as well as impacting the fallopian tube. Um, so we're going to do this for both ovaries. And here we see, you know, images of the left ovary again, looking at uh, the arterial waveform, um, resistive index, and then um, going through. And these are going to be the last sort of images of spectral jopper at the left ovary. One of the, you know. We take a look, and when we are looking at the ovaries, it's going to be important to set, to get a clear sense of the anatomy on these, you know, cine images, um, you know, scanning through, uh, if possible, to get a sense as to, you know, are there abnormal mass lesions? Is there anything adjacent to the ovary? You know, um, are there cystic lesions within the ovary? And next lesions? Is there any pathology impacting the fallopian tubes? Then here we kind of see images of the. Um, this is, you know, the depth is a little bit much for this um, sweep through the uterus as well, and we can get a better sense of the relative position and morphology of the overall uterus as well as any uh, lesions that we're seeing here, both of the uterus and at the and on, uh, you know, image right portions of the the cervix. Um, if we are seeing, if we're seeing uh, the bladder, um, which I don't think that here, at least on this. Uh, uh, on these images that we're seeing, you want to be, you know, careful to get a sense as to the, um, you know, make sure that you look for any sort of lesions affecting the bladder wall, for intraluminal lesions, things like this. As especially as hem hematuria can can mimic vaginal bleeding, so that's kind of an important differential consideration. Um, we're going to also see portions of the peritoneum. We're going to look for, you know, free fluid in uh, the Patrick Douglas. So we're going to look. Uh, um, and, and, and get a sense as to uh, if there's any pelvic free fluid or fluid in the anexa, um, whether there's any sort of um, peritoneal or pelvic cystic lesions uh, or other abnormality and incidentally imaged anatomy uh, adjacent to, you know, um, the uterus, the ovaries, fallopian tubes, other pelvic structures. Um, kind of once, once you've taken a look at all the anatomy, you want to remember that you want to get a sense as to, you know, if we're concerned about torsion, yeah, are you know is is are either of the ovaries enlarged? Are they displaced? You want to remember that it can be difficult for a particularly enlarged ovary to exclude torsion torsion phenomena, and you you know you want to be very careful about looking at that vascular pedicle and for that venous flow. Um, and you have to remember that 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 you want to correlate what you're seeing with what is the expectation in the in the patient? Are, is the patient pregnant and and then we're looking for a pregnancy but if we don't see one you know um then what could otherwise be a normal transvaginal appearing exam is actually ends up being a pregnancy of unknown location so you want to you want to have to have an understanding of this broader clinical context this really can affect how you look at this study so as again a quick summary as to what we did here in terms of an approach for the pelvic ultrasound or the transvaginal ultrasound you want to understand what's really going on with the patient we're going to take a look at all the images and see do we visualize all the anatomy we're going to go through the anatomy in turn the uterus cervix ovaries the adjacent 
you know, pelvic structures, peritoneum. If we see some of the bladder, we just want to double check and make sure we're not missing anything big there. And then putting this all together in the context of the patient, um, see if we can explain what's going on.